Hi guys, gsmdon.com and I'm here with the Prestigio Multiphone 5044 Duo. This is a dual SIM handset that has been launched in early August and the price tag is uh, $330. So it's an affordable dual SIM quad core handset with a 5 inch screen. Prestigio is an international brand. Uh, this is a company that has 32 offices in 70 countries and this is the slimmest multiphone model available so far. As I said, it was launched in August, so it's a pretty fresh product. Okay, now I'm going to talk just a bit about the design of this handset. We're dealing here with 8.4mm thick handset, pretty slim. It weighs 130 grams, which is not that uh, heavy. It has excellent grip, provided by the matte back side. Also, we get a flip cover inside the box. You already saw the unboxing. And we can remove this cover and put this one on. We get a screen protector on it, which is a pretty nifty thing. Okay, uh, now let me remove the back cover that I mentioned. I have a tiny slot here to actually remove it easier. This is it. And now you can attach this one if you want. The process is pretty simple. Do like this. You place the cover like that. And as you can see, the screen can sense the cover being open. Okay, now under the hood, we got this battery the two SIM slots and the micro SD card slot between them. By the way, this is the speaker right here in case you're wondering what's hidden under the hood of this phone. Let's continue talking about design. So here we get at the back a camera with a flash and under the flash there's a microphone and then we got this nice Prestigio logo. And finally the speaker right here. At the top we got the audio jack, the micro USB port and on the sides we got the on off button here on this side. On the other side we got the volume buttons and then at the bottom we have a microphone right here. While at the front we got the front camera, we got the earpiece and we have three capacitive buttons below the screen. You can see them right here that are dimly lit. This handset comes with a plastic case, it's an elegant black phone and you'll be tempted to believe that this is a metal frame, a chromed frame around the phone, you can see it's shine. It's actually probably plastic as well. So a plastic case but an elegant design for the Prestigio Multiphone 5044 or we can call it the Multiphone 5044 Duo. Okay now we're going to move on to the specs of this elegant handset. The screen is a 5 inch IPS HD and it uses one glass full lamination technology and the resolution is 1280 over 720 in the case of this handset. We also have a quad-core CPU, it's a quad-core Cortex-A7 that is a MediaTek processor and uh, the identity of the CPU is the MediaTek MTK6589. It's a quad-core 1.2 GHz unit and for those of you wondering, we also get a PowerVR SGX544MP GPU. Other specs of the phone include the G-Sensor, we get Wi-Fi connectivity, 1 gig of DDR2 RAM and 4 gig of uh, storage. At the back we've got an 8 megapixel camera with autofocus BSI LED flash. At the front a 2 megapixel camera available right here. And the micro SD card slot on this handset offers support for cards of up to 32 gigabytes in storage. There is also the micro USB 2.0 port available at the top and we have stereo speakers, a dual microphone with noise reduction and the OS on board of the handset is Android 4.2.1. We've got Bluetooth 4.0 here, FM radio, we've got GPS and a lot of other goodies. Okay, so the battery inside this is a lithium polymer 2000 milliampere unit. It may seem like a small capacity, which it kind of is. On paper we're promised a standby time of uh, 281 hours and a talk time of 15 hours. I have to say that in real life when testing this phone we achieved 5 hours of uh, HD video playback in case you're wondering and um, I must also mention that um, with 100% brightness you can barely reach one day of usage with this handset. So basically 5 hours of HD video playback and barely one day of usage with a 2000 mAh battery. Now moving on to the audio side, I want to show you the headphones that are bundled with the handset. Here they are. They're kind of in a bundle. 
this is the design the regular cheap headphones you can get at every store and a pretty big remote big and uncomfortable remote that's the verdict the headphones are big the design is not that nice and they're not that comfortable putting those to the side let's see what the speaker at the back of the phone can do I'm going to use good old SoundCloud to play a tune okay let's search for something new by the way this is a virtual keyboard pretty comfy this is a free song let's turn up the volume speaker right here Okay, you get the idea. So the volume is pretty good. It's a clear sounding uh, speaker with no distortion whatsoever. And aside from the ugly headphones, there's no problem with the audio. The speaker is easy to muffle. If you place the device on a flat surface, you will see that the sound can be heard in a more muffled way. And uh, in spite of the headphones being ugly and all that, the bass they have is pretty good. And in the settings area, you can actually do a slight tweak of the audio experience. You check the audio profiles and you get an audio enhancer especially created for your headphones and you can really feel it. Honestly speaking, I would keep that setting off because I can hear it uh, better. I can hear the song better without that setting. It sounds a bit uh, echoey with that setting and we also get FM radio on this handset, a feature that some uh, device makers have been neglecting nowadays. You will connect your earphones as the antenna and you also have a feature that allows you to record stuff straight from the radio and that's pretty much it when it comes to the audio experience decent volume, good bass but headphones that are ugly, uncomfortable to use and overall the audio is decent now I'm going to talk just a little bit about the video this is a 5 inch IPS HD LCD screen and it has a 293 ppi pixel density we don't have any screen protection on top of the screen keep that in mind and now I'm going to try and show you some of the trailers that I have on this device so let's see therefore despicable me and let's see this one the annoying banana trailer You can see that the colors are vivid, almost slightly oversaturated. Viewing angles are good as expected from an IPS LCD screen. The screen is pretty bright and it behaves decently in pure sunlight. And let's see another video with more colors. As I said, a slight feeling of oversaturation. But the viewing angles remain good and the brightness is not bad at all. Okay, so speaking of brightness, we also did the test using a microscope and let's see what came out. This is what came out, this is what the screen looks like on black with the microscope and on white. We achieved 345 lux units on white and we beat the Galaxy S4 that only achieves 206 lux units. Okay, time to test the camera of the handset, an 8 megapixel shooter with a few bugs. So we got this castle right here, the Warwick castle. Keep it in focus, taking a picture. Reasonably fast, that's what I can say about the shooter, the shutter, excuse me. It's reasonably fast. Okay, uh, this is an 8 megapixel camera with autofocus, uh, BSI, LED flash. The front 2 megapixel camera also has BSI and there's a slight UI bug which sadly is only triggered at times, so sometimes when I press these side options 
I will take a picture by mistake. So if I go into the scene mode, for example, or the panorama mode, I'm going to take pictures by mistake. Once again, it's not trigger all the time. For example, now it didn't do anything. So there are times when the camera will take pictures by itself. I'm navigating in the UI, selecting an option and the camera is taking pictures all by itself. That's the bug I was talking about. You try to select the options and instead you end up taking pictures. The UI is pretty simple. You've probably seen it on other devices as well. And now let me show you some of the settings. You can tweak the exposure with a lot of options actually. Let's go back to the normal picture taking mode. Okay, you also have some color effects to apply like mono, sepia, negative, aqua, blackboard, whiteboard. Scene modes, a lot of them to play with. A huge lot. White balance options, once again a lot. Image properties like sharpness, hue, saturation and brightness, contrast can be tweaked, all of them. Zero shutter delay is always a good feature. Face detection, self timer. You can even take continuous shots of 99 shots or 40 shots. You can set up the resolution, preview size, Either you can go full screen, which will take your picture size to 6 megapixels, or standard 4 to 3 for 8 megapixels. ISO goes up to 1600. There is a face beauty option, and when it comes to filming, there is a microphone on or off, audio mode meeting or normal, time lapse interval, and video quality going up to fine. So, those are all the options you can tweak on this device. Um, what I can say is that you can also take HDR photos, as shown in this option here. You can take beauty shots, you can take a panorama, and the bug is here yet again. Plus, you can take a multi-angle image, scenes, smiles, and all that. I guess you're annoyed by that bug, so let me just skip to the gallery and show you the shots I've taken using this camera. I've taken about 80 or so shots. Now, let me start with that multi-angle image. It's an interesting concept. Here it is. It's sort of like a 3D image. So let me trigger it. This is what the multi angle image is a sort of mini panorama in 3D. Okay, moving further, let's see what else we've got. The video is not so impressive, it's pretty compressed. The video is filmed in 3GP, that's the format. The colors in the pictures and the videos are slightly oversaturated. And when you zoom in, you'll see that you lose a lot of quality. Okay, back to the pics. Let me show you some colors so you can understand that oversaturation thing I was talking about. Let's zoom in. Some of the close-up shots are actually pretty good. We have a duck here that actually stands out from all the photos through the quality of the images. So the close-ups are actually pretty, pretty good. But the colors are oversaturated. Okay, um, this uh, camera films in 1080p at 30 frames per second. And strangely, the photos using the flash are pretty good. So this is a cheesecake without flash and with flash. It's actually a pretty good shot. It's indoors and it's a decent shot. Overall, the camera it reminds me of the old view handsets that I've reviewed so far. The price tag is not that far either. And as I said, slightly oversaturated. I must mention that the HDR is pretty good. So we have these peacocks right here. This is picture 126 without HDR. And this is with HDR. It's exactly the same picture without and with. So you can truly feel the power of the HDR. As I said, the camera is about on the same level with the many all view phones I've reviewed so far. Now we're in that area of the review where we talk about software. So that's why I'm going to go here. Enter the about phone section. You can see that we're running Android 4.2.1. And now let me go to the web browser of this device. By the way, this is the website prestigio.com. This is the virtual keyboard, reasonably comfy. Let me access gsmdom.com. Here we go. I have to say this is the isn't the fastest browser I've tried and sadly even the benchmark browser mark 2.0 didn't work on this browser which is kind of a bummer. The scrolling is not that smooth either and let's see how the website looks in landscape. You can add some more windows like that. You can alternate between tabs so to say. 
and that's it when it comes to the web browsing experience now it's time to analyze the performance from the perspective of benchmarks we've done all of them aside from browser mark that didn't work I have decided to compare the Prestigio handset you see right here with the AllView P6 Quad they share the same processor Mediatek MT6589 and the AllView handset is more expensive okay so in Quadrant we scored 3918 points uh, we got beaten by the AllView P6 Quad with about 60 points but the two are virtually equal in Antutu we scored better 13216 points we beat the old P6 squad and it's 20, uh, it's 12,000 points, excuse me. In Nanomark, by the way, here you can see some system info from Antutu. In Nanomark, as I was saying, Nanomark 2, 45.8 frames per second. We surely beat the old P6 squad and it's 39 frames per second. Moving further, in Velamo, a score of 1,468 points. We beat the old P6 squad and the 14, 17 points that it's called. Finally, the most relevant benchmark of all, 3D Mark, 3167. We beat the all view PC squad and it's 2976 points. Sadly, browser mark 2.0 wasn't available because it wouldn't run in the browser. Prestigio wins the battle with the all view PC squad that we're going to test someday when we're going to receive it. Okay, this is pretty much stock Android as you probably figured out by now aside from a few custom widgets and custom application, it's the standard experience that an Android phone with Android 4.2 should offer. We got a dialer right here and this is a dual SIM phone with decent call quality and now it's that part of the review where we enter the apps area to see what Prestigio decided to offer us. It includes a Prestigio e-reader that you can see right here. It's both a bookstore and an e-reader application. So this is the bookstore area. You can search stuff in many languages including English, search by themes, by genres, by authors, by popular. Let's go back. And we got a book that we downloaded. It's a free book. By the way, there are a lot of free books available here. And this is what the text looks like. Some options available here, bookmarks, a night mode or a day mode, a search, settings, margins, colors, wallpapers, appearance, scrolling, dictionary, so a huge amount of settings which is always good for an e-reading application. Moving even further, we have a nifty file manager, should be somewhere around here, this is the file manager, easy to work with, and moving further we got the Prestigio installer that will keep you up to date with the application that the maker of the phone recommends you download. It's finished for now. Well, usually it will check online and try to find the best apps that you can download. It recommends McAfee Mobile Security, Navitel, Evernote and CrossMe. We installed the Navitel app that I'll show you in a minute. And we also got Office Suite for those with productivity needs. And let's see what else. Other applications include the To Do. It's your basically reminder app with a basic interface. And let's get back to the app list. We have to install YouTube and Google Maps for ourselves since they weren't available on the device. By the way, this is probably the first time I'm showing you the brand new YouTube with an interface you're probably going to love. It's pretty cool because once you enter a video, you can keep searching for other videos with a picture-in-picture -picture setup. I'm going to show that on another date. Okay, you also have Google Maps that I had to install for myself. For myself, excuse me. Those are the options, bicycling, public transit, some settings available here and of course landscape mode available as well. This is the satellite view and Google Maps is handled decently on the Prestigio Multiphone 5044 Duo. In case you don't like Google Maps or don't find it to be sufficient, well we also installed an app called Navitel. Here it is. This one is actually a navigation app. I suspect that it comes with uh, voice guided navigation. It uh, can allow you to download the map of Europe for several countries where the handset is sold. It takes a while to load but it worth every penny. Of course we're using a trial version but you can actually have to pay at some point. I selected the light version. We've got 89 days left and there's already an update available. This is pretty much it. We get voice commands, landmarks here, a 3D view, we also get a menu, a route, my Navitel, settings, 
you can find an address, hide buttons, hide menu, navigation, POI filter, regional settings, dashboards, so a lot of settings and Navitel is actually a pretty cool application to have. Okay, it's that time of the review where we boast with the features of the device. By the way, I'm going to kill some of the apps, there are a lot to be killed. Multitasking done by keeping the home button pressed and swiping around to close the apps. Okay, is that part of the review where we try to showcase the gaming feature of the device? I installed Asphalt 8 and I tried to play it. I say tried because you'll see that there is a bit of lag present here. By the way, I installed Real Racing 3. It took forever to download and sadly it doesn't work on this device. In spite of the fact I've seen other reviews where Real Racing was working. Since Asphalt 8 will take forever to load, let's list some of the pros and cons of using this handset. On the pro side, of course, we got the nice design, we got that extra case bundle with it, we have the low price of $330, and we've got uh, pretty decent audio, bright screen, slim phone, and uh, stock Android, which is always something nice. Plus the fact that we get cool apps like Navitel and Mecafe straight from Prestigio's installer. Those are all the pros and all the cons, obviously the battery that can barely reach one day of use. The storage, I was saddened to see by that the storage doesn't leave you enough room to install a single game like Asphalt 8. So you'll be left with about 1 gig of free internal storage. Now you can see the lag. The camera is pretty weak, I will list it in the cons section rather than the pros. The headphones are ugly and uncomfortable and the games tend to lag and the handset tends to get a bit overheated when playing games and doing lengthy downloads. Trying to make Asphalt, load, asphalt 8 load better. Of course you can play games like uh, Temple Run 2 maybe or other titles that are no so not so graphically intensive. It's sad to see that it doesn't work because it has a quad-core CPU inside and a pretty decent GPU that I mentioned earlier. Well, maybe with an update or some sort of fix it can get rid of the lag. Okay, this is the Prestigio Multiphone 5044 Duo. This is Asphalt 8 and this was the review of the handset. We're giving it an 8.3 out of 10 for design, an 8 for the hardware and a 9 for operating system and user interface. The final grade is 8.43 out of 9 and you'd better not play Asphalt 8 on it, you'd rather play Temple Run 2. The price tag is $330 and the name is Prestigio Multiphone 5044 Duo. This is gsnon.com, hope you like this lengthy review of a fresh Prestigio handset, dual SIM, quad core with an IPS screen. Bye bye.